Hey, hey, everybody, Z Garcia here, and today we're going to be running our own board game cafe in Board Game Cafe Frenzy. In this card game, the players are going to be collecting cards that represent various things board games, coffees, and foods, uh, people who work at your store. You are going to have Wi-Fi symbols, because you, you want to have good Wi-Fi at your uh, board game cafe. And you are going to be gathering all those things, purchasing them first, and then doing sort of a trick-taking bit in, in the second half of the game. Trying to manage a whole bunch of stuff, actually, to be honest. And having uh, trying to have, anyway, the most victory points at the end of the game. So let's go ahead and take a look at how it works. I'll give you what I hope is a brief overview on the table, and I'll see you on the other side. Here we're taking a look at a game set up for four players. Uh, the players each have a board game cafe and you're going to be acquiring cards and then uh, trying to get the necessary things and please customers earn victory points in a few different ways, all right? So the game takes place over two distinct halves. During the first half, we're going to play 10 rounds until this deck is gone, buying these cards. Everybody's going to get one card every time until that's all done. And then during the second half, we're going to play a pseudo trick-taking game in which we are going to, again, continue earning these symbols, these different things, and uh, using action tokens, these action tokens over here, to get even more things. So let me go ahead and give you a glimpse at how each of the two halves of the game goes so you have an understanding, more or less, how it works. So, we're going to reveal four cards, we're going to rank them here by the value, just like this, and then we are going to begin. So the first player, this player right here now, is going to purchase one of these. The first one here is free, and then minus one, minus one, minus two for this one, okay? Uh, and this is, again, specifically to a four-player game that will be slightly different based on the player counts. So let's say I want to acquire this card right here. I'm going to pay one coin, and I'm going to take that card. Then the next player will go, they'll go ahead and pay two and take this one. That player is going to take the free one. And this player over here is going to pay one and take this one. Once that's done, we are going to check anything that shows up under the one symbol right here. That means during the first half of the game. Many of these are blank, they simply give you nothing. But this one here gives that player an action token. So they're going to take one of these action tokens, keep it in their pool, along with their money there, and then we refill the, t the cards out here. So we reveal one, two, three, four, and we're going to put these out. If there's a tie, they go out in the order in which they were revealed. So just like this. And then whoever took this card, that player right there, is first. Hence that right there. So they're going to uh, take uh, this one for one coin. They'll take that, they pay their coin, that player's going to take one, they'll acquire this one, let's say, and then I'll take the free one, and this player will take this one for two. So they get their change, and they take that one. And then this continues again until this deck is gone. A couple of things here. Right here on this one, you'll see there's a plus, and that symbol for one of these right here, as, and that card happens to have one as well. We're ignoring this for now, that's during the second half of the game. Whoever purchases this card is allowed to, if they want to, take one of these three and put it in their area as well. As soon as you do that, you will reveal a new one. And of course, when they acquire this card, they do that as well, okay? This player got another action token, so they'll take another one of those, and so on. So, let's go ahead and jump forward. Uh, let's say players have finished purchasing out this whole deck, and we'll take a look at phase two. So during that second half of the game, we're going to flip these over so they show positional numbers, one, two, three, and four, and then we are going to start. So on your turn, you are going to play a card. I might play this one. And then the players after have to play another card, but it cannot be the same suit. It cannot be something that's already in there. So the player is going to play that, this player is going to play this one, and this player is going to play uh, this one right here. Uh, let's give them that one. So I don't have to get into the tie-breaking rules. So this is what happened. These are going to go out to the players based on the values of the cards. So I get one. I have the highest number. This player is two, three over there, four over here. Now, based on this ranking, you can take one of these and now you're going to keep it on the table. It starts to be the things you are keeping in front of you. 
And now as you take it, you'll check the second spot here. So if I take this one, I get one coin, action, token. This one is plus one Wi-Fi symbol, which is one of the scoring things. And then this one right here is plus one on this tracker below my cafe. I'm gonna slide this down, okay? What that does is it lets it gives me more room to keep more cards. If it's right here, I can have four cards uh, in my cafe. As it grows, I can keep more things. And eventually, I'm getting a bonus of these tokens. These are your points, by the way, at the end of the game. So in that first half, when you're spending them, you are giving up victory points to do that. So let's say I take, uh, I take this one right here. I do that, I put it in front of me, right? I take the action token, and everybody in turn order based on these is going to do that. So all these will go out to the players, they'll keep them on the table. Once that's done, then the players are allowed to, anybody who has them and wants to, use one of these action tokens on one of the spots on their tiles here. And these are going to do a few different things, okay? Several of them let you increase cards you've already got. So for instance, let's say I've got this uh, cafe symbol right there. If I put a token on that matching symbol here, I'm going to increase the, uh, the card by flipping it over, and now it's Fancy Pants Cafe, right? I also get a bonus down here. And it's gonna stay like so, because that's one of the symbols that is going to please some of the customers out here. There's also some that let you draw your own customers and keep them, and you can fulfill those. Some of these will give you straight-up victory points. They will let you um, uh, increase Wi-Fi uh, and have more of those symbols, all sorts of little things. So you can use one of these to cover something up, like I said, and uh, utilize it to, to upgrade generally something. You can also flip these on the other side, and if I put that on Wi-Fi symbol, for example, it now counts as me having one more Wi-Fi symbol at the end of the game when scoring happens. And we continue doing this until we've, again, played that trick-taking half th throughout uh, the, you know, through the whole deck in its entirety. So again, 10 rounds doing that. We've collected 10 cards, and then we're going to play them out in 10 rounds. And at the end of the game, you do some scoring. So at the end of the first half of the game, uh, you're going to score just a couple of things, okay? Whoever has the most Wi-Fi symbols, or blue cards in this case, is going to get, so these cards. Whoever has the most of those is going to get six coins. Second place gets three, third place gets one. And then for every combination you've got of one of these cards, games, and one of the cafe cards, this one, so for every combination of a pink card and an orange card you've got, you are going to get three. And then you move on to the second half. At the end of the second half, then you score everything, okay? You are going to score your Wi-Fi symbols. And so if I have four or five Wi-Fi symbols, I get plus eight. You are going to score your capacity. If you've made it, uh, you know, uh, into a big enough place that you're going to get a bonus, you'll get that bonus. For every two action tokens left, you're going to get one token. Uh, for your customers, you are going to either score them or not score them. The public ones over here, uh, they, all of them actually, they'll show you what you earn if you please them, but you might lose something if you don't please them. Uh, only one of the two penalizes you though. Um, the, the customers you have in your hand and the customers that are out on the table behave differently when it comes to the penalty. So any that you drew during the game and are in your hand, if you manage to please them and give them what they want, they're going to give you the bonus, but they don't penalize you if you don't do them. These will penalize you if you don't do them. And every symbol required, so say that game symbol, once I use it for this customer, I cannot also use it for this one. This one over here wants Wi-Fi and fancy games. So if I use the fancy games on this one, I can't use it on anything else, and so on and so on, okay? So that's how that works. And then a couple of other things are going to score, and then you figure out who's got the most of these, which is your, uh, I guess, currency, your influence, whatever you want it to be. End of the game, whoever has the most of those is the winner, and that is a very brief overview of how the whole thing works.
All right, so that's the game. Let's go ahead and talk about it. Overall, I thought this was clever. It's an interesting game. But there's one word that kept coming to mind as I played it and played it, and that is streamline. Uh, this, I wish, was a, a more streamlined game than what it is. So let me talk about a couple of issues I have with it, and then we'll end strong, okay? How about that? So the first one, theme. The theme here is okay. It's very inside baseball, but it's cute enough. It, it works if you are... Again, it's like a big wink to board gamers everywhere. It's fine. I didn't necessarily love it, but I thought it was cute. The game arc. Streamlining would be good. I think the game arc, while it... Well, I like the two halves, and I think they, they're very different and they work out well. There is a lot of sort of little little things and little sort of um, exceptions to the thing that I think could have been cut and would have get, made the game a lot tighter, a lot smoother to teach, things like that. Like, you know, these symbols. These tokens here. It's like, great, you can earn these. You can get, uh, you know, little abilities. Or you can flip them over. And now they do something else. This car does this. Or you can do that. The people you hire at the store. Uh, where are the people you hire at the store? There's a whole thing about how the people you hire at the store, at the end of the game, you have to pay them. Uh, and it's, again, it's rules like that where you go, eh, that could have been left on the cutting room floor and no one would mind. You can remove a few rules from your game. You can streamline it, okay? It's not the most egregious instance of this I've seen. I'm just pointing that out, okay? And then the ease of play kind of goes hand in hand with that. Generally, once you've understood the game, it's fairly straightforward. But it could do with some streamlining. A second edition of this with some good development and some tightening up would be a, a, a game I would, I would certainly recommend as long as you don't mind the sort of, again, um, very much a uh, winky kind of theme. So things I did like. The aesthetics. I think the aesthetics here are good. Car quality is decent. I like the iconography quite a bit. And I like the look, the artwork, the general vibe going on here. The replay value I also think is good. There's a lot to juggle in the game. The players have unique player powers, which I did not mention. Not really player powers, but your cafes uh, have a specific way in which they score that nobody else has, okay? So that's neat. I like that you're going to have something unique you can try to do or prioritize. Like Wi-Fi symbols for me might be more valuable. So I'm going to try to do that. So that works well. And you won't be able to do everything. So the replay value kind of keeps you coming back, right? And then lastly, tactics, luck, strategy. There's a nice amount going on. I like both halves of the game. I think they both work out well. And you are basically building up a hand of cards and then playing tricks, collecting cards, triggering abilities, upgrading those, looking at the customers, making sure you've got the symbols to satisfy them, drawing your own customers. Oh, I can do this one too. Okay, great. Um, being careful that you are not going above the number of cards you can have in front of you. That's a great l limitation there. So you got to manage, you know, moving up on that track as well. Yeah, it's a nice mesh of ideas going on. They just feel a little raw. And a little more finesse would have gone a long way into making this, again, just, I, I think, a game that it would appeal to more folks. So there you go. That's what I think of it. I don't dislike it. I also don't think it's particularly great, okay? So from me, this one's going to get a 6.5 out of 10. Again, if it had a little more polish, that could easily go up. But as it is right now, it's a, it's a curious item, it's, a, it's an interesting idea, again, it's very tongue-in-cheek, uh, not tongue-in-cheek, but sort of like, you know, hey, board games. So, it's, it's, it works, I just wish the game was a little bit stronger, I guess, and a little bit um, more uh, well put together at the end of the day. So, there it is, Board Game Cafe Frenzy, best board game cafe ever card game. I don't think that's actually the whole title, but that's it, everybody. My name is Z Garcia. I'm going to see you on the next one.